Do you ever feel like manifestation is just another thing on your to-do list that you don't have time for? Like your spiritual practice is something that you have to do? Honestly, you're not alone because I felt that way too. Something that's really changed my relationship with manifestation is blending it into my lifestyle so that no matter what I'm doing, I'm also manifesting. I call this manifestation as a lifestyle and it single-handedly made the entire manifestation journey more enjoyable for me and I've seen my desires show up with a lot more ease. Manifesting as a lifestyle has made manifestation go from feeling like a task to something I just naturally do because it's who I am. If you'd like to learn more about this, I've created a step-by-step guide for you. I'll link it in my show notes so you can check it out. You're listening to the Affirmation Addict Podcast with Pyle Corley. This podcast will teach you about the power of affirmations while making manifestation easy and accessible for you in order to enhance your spiritual consciousness. Thank you so much for being here. And now it's time to get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Affirmation Addict Podcast. My name is Pyle, and today we're talking about forgiveness. And diving deeper into forgiveness, we're talking about forgiving and the concept of forgetting. I feel like it's a very common phrase to say forgive and forget, or I've even heard the opposite where it's like, I'll forgive you, but I will never forget what happened. And I just have so much to say on this topic because I think over the years, I'm finally willing to acknowledge that I have been hurt very severely by people that I love. Like, very, very severely. Um, And I think old me would have never been able to get over it. I think old me would have been holding a grudge and probably still would have not actually forgiven. And so I want to talk about the concept of forgiveness and what that actually means, because I think it's probably one of the most healing things we can do on our journeys, because so much of our life, so much of who we are is built off of our relationships. And so much of our 3D world is built off of relationships because we have coworkers, we have friends, we have family, we have in-laws, we have significant others, we have exes. We have all of these people in our life. And I think at one point or the other, we get into disagreements. Maybe we get into fights or maybe we've been hurt. And All of those situations I do think call for forgiveness. So I want to share with you a little bit about my experience with forgiveness and how I've used it to help my journey um, and the way I think it's helped my manifestation journey in specifics. So diving in, I'm going to, sorry, I need to fix my mic. Okay. So diving into forgiveness, I think the way it impacts our manifestation the most is because it impacts the way relationships continue to show up in our life. So for example, what I mean by that is I feel like we all want our soulmates, right? Or we want that super spiritual group of friends or we want really good relationships with our in-laws. However, when we have other relationships in our life that are hurting us, that are taking up unnecessary space, that are creating dis-ease in our minds and our bodies, We don't have space for new things to come. We don't have space for that to shift. And so the concept of forgiving and forgetting, I think is probably one of the most healing things. The first part is forgiveness. I think forgiveness, there's not a perfect ritual. There are rituals. So if you've heard of the Hawaiian ritual of, I'm going to butcher it, but Ho'opono, I believe. I know I'm saying that wrong and I'm so sorry. Um, However, it's a very, very beautiful, very powerful technique in the forgiveness space where it's essentially you're saying a combination of four different affirmations and you keep repeating them. And it's, thank you, I'm sorry, please forgive me and I love you. And you keep saying that to whoever you're forgiving. And I love it personally because I'm biased because it is essentially saying affirmations with the intention to forgive. However, going deeper than that, forgiveness is ultimately a choice. I think we can choose to hold on. I think we can choose to wait for that apology from someone who's hurt us, or we can choose to forgive and say, okay, I really do forgive you. And what does forgiveness actually look like? And this is kind of the key differentiator because we'll say, yeah, I forgive you. But if you look at that person through the lens of how they hurt you, or if you're holding that judgment on how that person has treated you in the past and you can't move past it, then you really haven't forgiven and you definitely have not forgotten. And so I think we use forgive and forget or forgive, but don't forget as an excuse to 
quote unquote forgive, but not actually forgive because it's hard to forgive. It's like that person hurt me so much. Why should I forgive them? That person did not serve me well. So why do they deserve my forgiveness? I want to be mad at them. It kind of feels good for our egos to be angry. It feels good for our egos to say they hurt me and they're wrong. Like that makes our egos thrive. And so if you're finding it hard to forgive, it might be a game you need to play with your ego and a conversation to have and say, why am I not choosing to forgive? A lot of the times we feel like that person doesn't understand what went wrong. That person doesn't hasn't made an apology. And a lot of those things are ego-based. If we are able to forgive without expecting anything in return and choosing to forget, choosing to stop holding that label, holding that situation onto that person, it is so freeing. I feel like I would probably have no friends and no relationships in my life if I didn't forgive and forget. I honestly can tell you probably the only person who's never hurt me that bad is Tom. Um, Even my own parents, like I've been so mad at them and I've been so hurt by siblings, by family members, by some of my best friends. Like I've had issues with multiple people in my life and it doesn't even mean anything on them. It's more of a reflection of me and gave me mirrors of what I can work through rather than expecting them to apologize. And I can tell you 99% of them never really apologize. So it's not like they've changed. It's that I realized it didn't have to affect me and maybe I was being hurt for no reason. And even if it was a valid reason, I feel like I'm a very logical person. So a lot of these reasons that I was hurt were valid, but holding on to that hurt was only hurting my energy. It was only draining my energy and draining my vibration. So I had to make the decision, do I want them out of my life? Do I want to make that conversation? Do I want to kick them out of my life or do I want to move past it? And for 98% of people, I chose to move past it. There are some people who I've left out of my life, um, or maybe we've left and then if we rekindle in the future, we rekindle. But there is beauty in choosing to forget, choosing to forgive, and not expecting anything in return. However, that is a total shot to our egos because that's like saying you're forgiving someone who's cheating on you. But forgiving doesn't mean that you're okay with what they've done. It doesn't mean that everything's going to be the same, but it just means that you're not letting it drain your energy and take your power away. So I'm not saying forgive and pretend like nothing happened. That's not what I mean by forget. I mean, you're not allowing it to impact your energy. If it's something very major, something non-tolerable, I don't think you need to keep those people in your life again. However, you can still choose to forgive, but choose to cut that boundary and establish that they are not in your life. I think there are definitely moments where people should not stay in your life. However, for petty things, like for very silly things that most of our problems come through, I think there is room for forgiveness and for forgetting and for acceptance. And it's probably been the most freeing thing in my journey because by operating this way in many of my relationships, I've created space for more fruitful relationships in my life. And I've brought more peace into these relationships. I brought peace into the relationships that usually trigger me. I brought peace into the relationships that used to make me feel drained whenever I hung out with them. However, maybe they haven't changed. Maybe they have, but I wasn't putting it on them to change. I was allowing myself space to change the way I see the situation. And that really goes to show the power of your mind, the power of your perspective, because ultimately everything is an illusion. Everything is kind of a projection of your subconscious mind. So if you're willing to, if your relationships just feel heavy in your life, all types, right? It's like romantic, friendship, family, coworkers, if those feel heavy in your life, maybe this is something you can take on and really put into practice because it has brought me some of the best people, new people in my life. And I never thought I could make new friends at 27, 28. I never thought that was possible. Everyone told me after college, it's really hard to make friends, but I've met some of my best friends after college and people who are even closer to me than my relationships from some of my college friends. So And I don't think it would have been possible unless I chose to forgive some of my relationships and some of my friendships. And that is to say, I have friends who've known me since I was literally born. So 
there's a whole spectrum of the different types of relationships you can establish, but also the room for growth and the amount of love you can receive and feel if you allow yourself the chance to forgive and forget and truly forget without holding such a heavy grudge, without putting so much pressure and not taking every single thing so seriously. Even if you are hurt, you're allowed to be hurt. I'm not saying you can't be hurt, but I'm also saying that you can choose to stop feeling hurt after some time. You're allowed to move past it and choose a better feeling thought, choose a better feeling belief, choose a better feeling story for this relationship when you need to forgive and forget and accept. I always get a ton of questions in my DMs from people asking how I can manifest X. The truth is you can really manifest anything as long as it's for the greatest good. And if you're having trouble manifesting something right now, or you feel stuck on your journey, I have a really beautiful resource I've made for you. It's a free quiz. It's called the Manifestation Archetype Quiz. And it's something that I've created so you can find out your manifestation style to give you more clarity on your spiritual journey. After taking the quiz, you're going to receive the best resources for your specific archetype to help you attract your desires based on where you're at and what you want to create. So you can find a link to the quiz in the show notes or just head to my website at www.affirmation-addict.com. So the way I've noticed this helped my manifestation journey is I've noticed that my relationships actually bring me a lot more joy. For a really long time, my relationships felt full of pressure, full of triggers, and kind of a lot of heavy stuff. They were surface level joy, but deeper, they brought up a lot of different issues. However, now I feel like I have the pleasure of actually enjoying my relationships for what they are, a relationship, a conscious choice between two people choosing to give energy to each other, spend time to together, talk to each other, create meaningful conversation. I feel like my relationships have become a whole nother layer of meaningful and full of depth rather than those shallow gossip filled conversations. I feel like so many of my relationships have actually flourished because of this. And with those relationships flourishing, I feel like I'm flourishing because I feel like there's a whole new world for me to explore. I feel like there's more minds and more energy for me to explore. And I get excited when I'm in these social settings and I don't feel exhausted. I think there's a really popular kind of stigma, unspoken kind of hierarchy that when you start your spiritual journey, you want to focus on yourself. You kind of start to isolate. You don't party. And I fully agree. I think that's one layer But I also think there's a beautiful layer where you can be on a spiritual journey, but you can be very social. You can be fueled by conversation. You can learn so much from other people because ultimately we are all one. We are all are from the same energy and everybody in your life is a reflection of an aspect of you or the universe. So why not use that to learn from it? Why not evolve even further and learn even more about all that there is to offer and have fun with it? So I think there's like that unspoken stigma of, okay, I'm isolating. I don't have time. Um, I prefer my own company, which I fully do. I fully prefer my own company, but I also can't replace the energy other people bring into my life, especially other people in my life who are super self-aware, very, very spiritually inclined, maybe not perfect, but inclined or curious. And it's absolutely fascinating. I get to have the most mind-opening, inspiring, heart-opening conversations. And I don't think that would be possible if I was holding on to her. I don't think that'd be possible if I was staying mad at a friend for how they treated me two, three, 10 years ago, like we're allowed to move past it. And when they say time heals, it's because at one point it gets tiring to hold on to something that's making you so angry. So maybe skip that delay, maybe surpass the delay and speed up your healing process and say, you know what? I'm actually going to choose to forgive. I'm also going to choose to forget. And I'm going to choose to accept because ultimately nobody owes us anything. Your friends, your family, No one owes us anything. When you can drop expectations, when you can drop how other people should be treating you, you are literally the most free you've ever been. Now, this opens up a conversation for what are expectations versus standards? Shouldn't I be at a standard of being respected? 
100%. However, if you are being disrespected and you're tolerating it, I mean this with only love that is on you because you are accepting it. You can, if someone is disrespecting you, that's when you can choose to forgive, forget, and set a boundary and leave them from your life. But a lot of the times when someone is hurting us, we aren't able to communicate that, hey, this is not okay with me. Are you willing to fix this? And if they're not willing to fix this, we leave. However, a lot of the times we expect them to read our minds. We expect them to know it's common sense, but maybe they've never seen that worldview. Um, We expect them to come and apologize. We expect them to treat us differently without us communicating anything. And that's where toxic relationships start to build. However, with the art of very clear, very clearly communicated expectations, but room for acceptance, room for maybe I am wrong because there's a fine line and I don't, I haven't thought this out fully enough, but there's a fine line between a standard and an expectation that doesn't serve you. You can have an expectation for someone to treat you with respect You can also have an expectation for someone to text you back within 30 seconds. And if not, they hate you. And that is unreasonable. I'm only saying this because I've been in that exact situation. I have felt that. I have lived the anger and the sadness that comes from it. So there are reasonable expectations and there are unreasonable ones. And notice the best question to ask yourself is, is this coming from a place of lack of self-worth or self-doubt? Or is this coming from a place of, This is me feeling self-empowered. There, I can probably write an entire book on this, but there's self-doubt and then there's fake self-empowerment that is a mask of true self-doubt. And I think I don't want to dive into this because I haven't articulated it in my head yet. So I don't want to ramble and make it not make sense, but be honest with yourself and be curious with yourself. Like, Is this actually from a place of self-empowerment or is there something deeper within me that's actually self-doubting and I'm masking it as self-empowerment? I see this a lot, um, especially in the spiritual space. I see this a ton in hustle culture. I see this a ton in so many other things where we are actually just replacing a void with a different void, even though it has a more positive lens. So I want to be mindful that you're not doing that, especially in your relationship. So you can have standards, you can have expectations. However, if I'm being fully real, I have come to the point where it's not fair for anybody to owe me anything. I get to choose how I label and how I consider that relationship. Yeah, I would love if everybody treated me the way I treated them, but that's not possible. We all have different ways of approaching the world. So that's a really heavy expectation to put on someone. So if your baseline is decency, respect, and kindness, that I think is fair. But how kind of tedious, how strict are you being on that? Or are you willing to accept their version of kindness? And you'll know if it's an energy suck or an energy drain, but you also have to be able to check yourself and have a very honest conversation with yourself. If you're the one who has too high of expectations, not that people can't meet them, but you're being unreasonable and it's actually just you masking for something within yourself. So it is a very nuanced topic. That last part we just talked about, it's very nuanced It might feel very contradictory and hypocritical, and I own that. I know I'm pitching it in a way that is kind of contradictory, Um, but really explore. Don't take it literally. Take it with a grain of how can I apply this and how can it serve me? And reflect on some of your past friendships, your past relationships, and see what could have gone better, what could have been different if I handled it in a different way and just see the impact that has on you, see the impact it has on some of your friendships and your relationships and just be playful with it rather than so rigid and strict and harsh on your relationships. You are allowed to forgive and move past. You don't have to hold on so tightly to the things that hurt you. And that's relationships 101, all types of relationships. It involves communication, love, acceptance, and most importantly, in my opinion, forgiveness, because what might hurt me might be totally normal to the other person. And that takes an open mind to be okay with. And I think that is such a powerful thing. And it can really shift the way you carry yourself throughout your day. I think things won't impact you as much. Your vibration won't be as fragile with your relationship. So I hope this episode brought a little bit of 
eye-opening insight. I hope it kind of made you wonder and just think for yourself for a little bit, do a little bit of self-reflecting. I think that's the most powerful tool we have as humans is the ability to self-reflect. And I totally encourage it, even if you disagree with me, reflect what thoughts did this trigger, what triggers did this trigger, and go from there. So if you made it this far, I love you. Thank you for being here, and I will see you in the next episode. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for listening, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If this episode resonated with you, it would mean the world to me if you can rate, interview the podcast and share it on your social media. So I know to keep creating episodes that are inspiring you to manifest. I'm so genuinely grateful for the time we shared today. And I'd love for you to join the community by following at Affirmation Addict on Instagram. To continue diving into spirituality and manifestation, head over to my website, affirmation-addict.com. Until next time, I'm sending you so much love and so much healing energy.